Hi, everyone. Uh, this is our third session where Sally and I will continue our journey to learn about programming in general. We're going to use C Sharp to kind of express our thoughts and express our uh, solutions to certain problems that we may face in the real life, you know, through code. And today I'm going to kind of hand the microphone over to Sally so she can show us, you know, what she came up with when it comes to solving the problem that we talked about yesterday. What was the problem that we talked about yesterday, Sally? I'm sorry, I'm an old man. I forget things all the time. <laughs> what was the problem? Mm -hmm. Basically, we wanted to know that whenever an item enters the room, uh -huh. so like if the space uh, basically left, and then what exactly what item? Basically, you push many items, and then you want to know at what item you say, okay, the space is finished, so we don't have no more space. So that was the uh, whole. So we need to say what are the items that fit in? No, what are the, what are the items that didn't fit in? And then yeah. these items. Yeah, OK, yeah. all right. So we keep pushing and until the point that we say, OK, no more room. So and <laughs> what exactly what is the item that you try to insert and doesn't fit? Uh huh. Uh huh. OK, all right. Go ahead. Share your screen. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know I should do it. <laughs> so, uh, let's so. Well, let's try. Where can I find my sharing the screen again? Sure, Sally uses a Mac, so we'll see how that works. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Window. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Not mm -hmm. yet. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Okay. Can you remind me again? So where? So, so there's this uh, on the top right side, right next to the leave button, that mm -hmm. red button. There's yeah. something called share content. It's like an arrow up, yeah. and then you get to pick up the window. That yes. refers to that particular screen, and then you kind of gonna select Visual Studio. There you go. Yikes! I see myself. All right, let's go to the Visual Studio part. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, here is my. There we are. That's it. Oh. I can see your code. All oh. right. Yeah. All right. We, we tried several things. So let me just remind what people what we did last time. So basically, um. Here first, we, last one first, we measure the total space. And then, so here I comment them out. Then we measure the whole uh, size of the furniture all together. That's right. Then compare the size, the total space with the total furniture size, and then yeah. get the result out. But now, this time, so I decided before, after, while each uh, item is inserting, so also I update my space, not let it like at the end of the process. So that's okay. what I mean like here. So basically for each furniture items when I get them, mm -hmm. so, uh, so I calculate my total furniture size, so it will mm -hmm. increase basically by each item that is coming to the room. Okay. And then also, I name changed the, you had different name, I guess. So I changed the total space, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the, to the whole room space, and it kept updated. And then basically we subtracted from the item when inserted to the room. Okay, okay, okay. So mm -hmm. you're, you're accumulating the furniture size, mm -hmm. and with every iteration of the furniture, mm -hmm. um, let me see if I can help you fix those red lines first. Do you want to take away the closing squiggly bracket on line 100? That mm -hmm. might that might fix that problem, I think. On on line 100, exactly. 100. All the way up, 100. Yeah, I'm just trying to fix the errors here. There was no error. Why? Why this? Uh, uh, try tr tr yeah. try undo or something. Yeah. Undo. Oh, there you go. So oh, that was just yeah. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so you basically went and said, "Give me the total space for all the rooms." I agree, and then you basically went and said, "You know, for each furniture, in these mm -hmm. furnitures, uh, go ahead and add to the furniture sizes all mm -hmm. the furnitures that went in, and then for each." When the total space, as long as the total space is bigger than or equal, the furniture sizes. Because the first good. item might be so big, you don't know. 
that's Where right. You, so that's why you for the first item you have to compare it. Right, and then and the, uh -huh, uh -huh. for every iteration you basically went in and said. Um, in, increase the index. You can also, by the way, just you know, just so you know, instead of saying index equal index plus one, you could say index plus plus. You know this. I know you know this. So, so yeah, this is for simplification. Uh, so you're taking away from the total space of the of the room, and you're adding to uh, the furniture size. Okay, beautiful. Okay, and then you went and said if the total space is less than the furniture sizes. Then go ahead and say the item at the index of whatever that index is mm -hmm. out of this count of items. And then you're printing out the furniture index and you put a name. Oh, so you modified the model mm -hmm. of your furniture. Nice. Very nice, Sally. Very, very nice. I really like that. And then you said, oh, well, this item doesn't fit and we're going to stop right here. OK, mm -hmm. run your app. Let's see. Oh, Let's see how yeah. that works go here and then basically so here i add one more like chair uh -huh. just, uh, like to show you and then basically now we're trying that doesn't fit the size uh so just remind you some size some random size and then here all we run at so this is uh i said the item number three i have to mm -hmm. fix this out the space yeah mm -hmm. yeah so here was the problem I had. So uh -huh. whenever ah. I to read the chair, basically item like furniture index. So through my furniture is a list. I wanted yeah. to get the basically this item or this yeah. item. So I can yeah. I couldn't find, figure it out like the way I even tried here. For mm -hmm. example, I assume like this is the way I read the Mm -hmm. uh, element, but yeah, I was wrong. So that's why I went to give them a name so I could find the name. Now, for example, here, item three, mm -hmm. my chair three was the size that's so big. And then mm -hmm. it told me that, I mean, which so name. I, I might be able to help with this. Let's go back to where you print this statement. Mm -hmm. And here. let's scroll down. So you see this place where you say furnitures of index? Mm -hmm. Here. This guy here. When you say furniture of index something, that basically means you have the entire object. You still have to kind of extract the name out of the object. So try to do after index close uh, angle bracket, try to type in, uh, sorry, bracket, just type dot name. Dot name. Yeah, let's run your program again and see what happens. Mm, what do you think? It found yeah, it. I found it. Okay, so here it is. So if I wouldn't update my model, so you know here in my model, I give them a name. Mm -hmm. If I wouldn't give them a name, and basically I wouldn't update my model, so would I be able to still see, for example, how is no, you it wouldn't. the chair you wouldn't. number one? I wanted to get, because here, you know, the list is chair one, two, TV, so this is my list, right? Mm -hmm. So putting a name, putting a name on your model is exactly the right thing to do. That's the little question, the little kind of research. So you mm -hmm. basically, because you will never be able to take the variable name once you added all the all of these variables in a list. Mm -hmm. It's just a variable name. You don't have access to it anymore once you pass it as a parameter. And that's one of the limitations of C-sharp, to be honest with you. When you pass in a parameter, you know, being able, capturing the parameter name would help me a lot in a lot of the things that I do, but we're not there yet in terms of technology. So let mm -hmm. me just acknowledge two things. Number one, putting the name in there in your model is exactly the right thing to do, 100%. Uh, the other thing that you did here, now let me ask you this then. Let's go back to your solution, to your code. And let me ask you this. In here, you're only saying the one item that was supposed to be uh, uh, put into the house, but it doesn't mention the other items that didn't fit either. Like, you, like say you have three TVs and mm. two chairs, and you were, you were only able to fit <clears throat> 
one oh. TV and one chair. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the my idea was that uh -huh. with like the items, everything coming in the order that I don't define. So I didn't go through. Basically, I didn't know that what item I have from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So. So while the item keep coming in, so I start like uh, I know the total item basically, uh -huh. but I didn't know uh, which item. Maybe we can order uh, uh, like uh, order them by size, or I mean like sort them by size. No, I have an idea. We mm -hmm. can basically go and say, what do you think about the idea of creating like? you know, a a uh, a bucket or another list mm -hmm. of the items that were successfully fitted into the house or into the room and then subtract these items from the original list. So we find the rest of the items that didn't actually fit in. Oh, OK, so you mean. Uh, Let's try it together. What do you think about that? I have to get clear about the question. So, yes. for example, you want to know, for example, in my list, I have item one, two, three, and then at three, it doesn't fit anymore. So do you want to know what is the item four, five, six or yes. the rest of the item? OK, yeah, yeah I think yeah, think okay. about it this way. Let's say we hired two men in a truck, you know, this company, two men in a truck, and we basically, you know, loaded their truck with all these items. And then they gave us a call and they said, well, sir, we ran the we ran the program. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it seems that we can only fit the TV and the sofa, but we won't be able to fit in the bed and the fridge and, you know, maybe the Xbox. That's that's a normal thing that happens in the real life. People will go and say, here's the items that we can fit in. Here's the items that we can't fit in. Mm -hmm. Let me visualize things for you. OK, okay. let's go on. Yeah, let's visualize things. You know, visualization is always yeah. a good thing. Before, yeah, I I will share the screen, but but before I before I we start on this, just letting you know, this is this this is the solution that you came up with for someone who is you know exploring this whole world of software engineering. I'm I'm very glad. I'm actually very 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 impressed. Uh, mm -hmm. But but let's just go here and say, okay, we have these two guys, mm -hmm. right? And these guys are moving a truck full of stuff. Right, so this is our truck here. I'll do my very best to make a truck. And, you know, this truck is full of stuff and we want to basically be able to go and say, you know, th the truck itself is full of items. And these items can, can be anything you can think of. It can be a TV, it can be whatever we want it to be, okay? Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> let's see here. Oh, I, I broke my truck. OK, there it is. So OK, so these are, are our items. And now I want to go and say, well, you know, for this item in here, for these items, these two men here, they got a deal where they are supposed to move stuff into someone's house. Mm -hmm. The thing about moving stuff into this guy's house is that there are two options here. They need to know whether it's possible first or not. They need to know whether it's possible or not before they take on that deal so they can actually, you know, charge the customer fairly, right? There are two options here. The first option is to go and say, well, let's move the items in and let's see if these I if these items don't fit in, you know, we, we would have wasted our time and effort. Let's see each item takes about an hour, you know, to move. And then they move these two items and oops, this item here doesn't fit. And now they have to pull everything back because items didn't fit in and you know their agreement didn't come through because their agreement is literally to move all the items in but if you have a computer a computer program that can go and say well give me the size of this house and let me measure which items can go in and which items can't go in mm -hmm. that's basically what we're trying to do here sally we basically want the, the program to mm -hmm. come and tell us for all these items that you have in your truck here is what will fit and here's what won't fit and 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 here's how to fix this problem. So I'm going to put a bunch of items in here and so okay. So what so what does our program need needs to do now? We need to be able to tell the program about the size of our of the house in here. Mm -hmm. And we also need to educate the program about all the items that we have in here. All the little items that we have in 
in the truck. And then we want the program to tell us which items did fit and which items didn't fit. Right, let's start with the items that we couldn't fit or wouldn't fit in the house. And then I'm going to tell you how amazing this is in terms of software engineering, because while you and I are solving a simple problem of moving some uh, uh, inventory or some items into a house, think about this in a larger scale, Sally. Think about this in terms of um, uh, having a, a, big, um, a big storage house like a like a storehouse mm -hmm. where there is like a there's like thousands and thousands of items that need to be moved into this storage mm -hmm. and and there is no way for people to be able to kind of move all of these things and let the rest of them stay outside to spoil or whatever the the nature of the items may be this is where computers come in and actually tell you what available space you have and what you can and can't fit into that storage at this point in time. And then I'm going to lead you to something in computer science called the knapsack problem. But that's that's a little bit too advanced. By the way, the problem doesn't have a solution up until today, as far as I know. But um, uh, but let's just uh, let's just move forward with this. Okay. So mm -hmm. in any program that we try to pro any software that we try to program, we have to be very clear about two things. And you probably have experienced this because sometimes this is why I use pictures when I explain a, a problem because sometimes I'm I don't do you know such a good job into explaining what the problem is this is why i use shapes and colors like this so kind of it's a universal language right so so our input here would be a list of items these items in here mm -hmm. and our output will be the items that did not fit into the house assume that these two items didn't fit i want to know about all the items that didn't fit into the house can i give you something here yeah is, absolutely go ahead mm. if d is uh, equal to size of the room for example so big that mm. when it is equal to the size of room so when it goes in it doesn't let c d a basically mm -hmm. fit. for example c d a i mean a b c are small Mm -hmm. So they can fit if they go first. Then mm -hmm. D. But if D is big enough and it go first, mm -hmm. then that's what the rest like basically fit. So I'm trying to understand what uh, like the order is matter. Like the, it's still, it still doesn't. Know? It doesn't. Oh. Number one rule in programming and software engineering: if it's not in the requirement, then it's not a restriction. Okay. Remember this for as long as you write code and you take requirements from people. If they didn't specify something, don't program yourself into a corner, my friend. Okay, this is really, really important because the stuff that you just said to me, I know, I know, you're you're smart. You're thinking about all the possibilities and that's how you're going to be a great engineer. But, you know, unless it's specified specifically that these items have to be in a particular order, then for all we care, first mm -hmm. and last out. Okay. Okay, they didn't specify. So our program now, our goal is which items I got did it. not fit into my room. Mm -hmm. That's all. The That's list is random. The <laughs> list is random. And this is the list that we have. Okay. Now mm -hmm. let's try to solve this problem together. So what do you think? Let's think about this in a as a solution. Remember how I told you we can think about it as a solution first. And then we can turn that solution into patterns. Do we need iteration? Do we need selection? Do we need sequencing? Or maybe all of them, or maybe some of them, or combining a, a little bit of here and there. And then we translate that into code. Forget about code for a second. How would you solve this problem? Like if I were to tell you, here is manually, let's say on paper, on a piece of paper, mm -hmm. how would you go and say, I want to think about a solution where I can report about the items that did not fit into into the house how would you go about solving that so first as you've mentioned so you calculate the house basically mm -hmm. the room mm -hmm. size and then compare it with each single one and then as you add that 
button. So you kind of subtract the space. Aha, there you go. OK, keep going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then uh, 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 up to the point that it is equal the I mean, the item that was enter, it's bigger than that uh, updated space. Then you say it doesn't fit. Right. right. So let's say you moved you moved this in here and it did fit. Mm -hmm. And then you moved in here this and then this did, did, did fit. And then you tried to move this here and it didn't fit. Now what? What should we do now? So now we should say it didn't fit. Yes. And did, okay, this, didn't uh -huh. fit. And then also you want to say A also didn't fit. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we need to go and say, give me all the items that are left to be moved into this house. And let's put these items on the side and say, well, sorry, sorry, boss, we couldn't move these items. OK, so then I would change my. So first you look at the whole list of the item that you have, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Getting very close. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like you have and then. Um, or label them sort of number one, number two. OK. Uh, so from yeah, but basically number is kind of it has number A, B, C, like one, two, three, four. Uh -huh. And then associate with each index is there. It is a name. Uh -huh. So what do you think about this idea? Let's have let's have one guy in here mm -hmm. and one guy in here. And this guy in here has a list. Mm. Like like a piece of paper. I got you. And it has a list of all the items. Mm -hmm. So this guy says, here's all the items that I have in my truck. So you have a list, basically. And then this guy here is holding another piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, here's the items that we could fit mm -hmm. in. And mm -hmm. then at the end of day, they go and say, well, since we have these items, like don't think about this in terms of four items. Think about 40 million items, right? That's where computers actually come in very handy. So this guy, let's call this guy John. Rich. And let's call this guy Mike. <coughs> Excuse me. So these th these two guys will come at the end of day and they say, well, we reached capacity. Let's mm -hmm. compare your list to my list. That's what I want to say. Right? There is nothing more like uh -huh. writing put it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. so it sounds, to, now you uh, want to compare to a list, whatever, like in not included in that list. Exactly. At the, okay. So it sounds to me, since you already actually already defined this list, mm -hmm. it sounds to me that we need a new list that tells us the items that have already been moved in, right? Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Your turn. You write the code. <laughs> Let's see. Go back. Okay. Hmm. This is it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here we have to update or I was OK. Hmm. So basically we want to make a list of the items that already get in. So Precisely. Mm -hmm. uh, OK, I want to make a new list. Um, right. I call it list that is fit. Right. Um, Let's create a new list on top of that for each that you have. Yeah. Well, how can I make a list? OK. Oh, it's very easy. Just type in list. list. Yep, uh, and then give it a type furniture. Angle brackets. I think they're called angle brackets. I don't know. Yep, furniture. Uh, and then let's give it a name. Let's call it, I don't know, what do you want to call it? Yeah, fitted items or fitted furniture. Sure. And then let's initialize this list by saying it's a new list, like an empty list. Yeah. Okay. And then should I have. You want to open, yeah, there you go. So here's the deal. Every time an item fits in, meaning that it passes this if statement that you have, mm -hmm. what should we do? So we should update the fitted item list. Mm, 
basically Let's do that. Painted item list mm -hmm. equals. Nope, nope. You want to add to it. You don't want to kind of nullify it. We want to add to that list. Let's try add dot add. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's a method you you can use on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to use two methods today, but go ahead. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add the item. Well, let me see how can I if total space item. Should I have the name? Yes. Yeah, um, what should we what should we add to that list? The items that fit it in, right? Basically this one furniture. Not, not the name, the whole object, right? Because the, the object is more than just a name. The furniture oh. piece has a size and a name, right? And mm -hmm. we want to just collect. You said you said I'm going to collect a list of furniture, not list of names, mm -hmm. right? And I'll tell you why that's important later. But where do we get that furniture piece that fitted in from? From this furniture. That's it. Let's do it. So that's I, that's why I'm trying to figure out the fit. Is it like inside the parentheses and then? Yeah. Furniture? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. this, okay. That's uh -huh. it. <laughs> so now oh. the second list, the second mm -hmm. list of the guy that's sitting on the right, this guy now has the pieces of furniture that actually fitted into the house. Mm -hmm. The rest is for us to go and find out at the very end, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so this else statement that you have in there, mm -hmm. uh, this yeah. else statement. At that statement, we gonna we need to basically return a list of all the items mm -hmm. that didn't fit in. So how are we gonna do that? Let's open a scope. I'll like, see. Maybe. Um, yeah. Let me, let's see if I can actually help you out with this. You should get a request like to share control in here. Do you have it? At the top of your screen, if you touch the top of the screen, it will say allow control or something like that. Is it later? I allowed. Oh, you allowed it? Okay. Am I? Mm. Mm, it's not letting me do anything. <laughs> am, I, am I the one that's moving the screen? No, it's me. <laughs> okay. Let me let me try this again. Here is requesting oh, control. You're the, now you change it yourself. Oh, I changed it. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's go back to the code. Yeah, can you? Let's see uh -oh. if I can type anything. No. Can I type? No. no, perhaps you can. Oh, let me minimize this. <laughs> Both in, okay. in the frame. Um, do I actually have control? Okay. Oh, okay. Do you have now? Okay, I do. You should do, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. not taking my keyboard, but but that's OK. Let's let's do this. Let's do this. So so let's go back and let's do this. Open up a squiggly brackets like open, close, squiggly scope. When I say scope, I you no know, squigglies. It has to squiggle. Yeah, it looks like a snake. It's a worm. Just like this guy. Just like in the if statement. OK. Yeah, open, close scope for that one. Um... No, 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 no. Do you see this brackets, these little the the open close parentheses or, or squiggly brackets after the if statement we need two more like them oh or okay. the else this yeah oh okay <laughs> <laughs> curly okay brackets. i i i oh curly brackets i don't know why i say squigglies okay so let's let's put some stuff inside there let's open up that scope put a new line in there inside of it and yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah. and then let's do this we need to find out about the list that has the, so okay you saved the items that fitted in the room mm -hmm. let's create a new list of the items that did not fit into that room by defining a new variable so just type mm -hmm. in list and then furniture again and then let's go up in here and say not fitted mm -hmm. and, uh, and then let's go and do this. So in order for us to find the not fitted items, what should we do? We need to compare the two lists, right? The two mm -hmm. lists that we have. So all we got to do is just go and do this. The furnitures list, all the furnitures list that we have. So type in furnitures. furnitures. Okay. Furnitures. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then dot. 
except what it doesn't have except e x c yeah how about how about subtract does it have subtract perhaps no i should add the system i realize you, you uh, this should is add what system I that link that. yes that's right yeah. oh yeah try accept and then e capital e uppercase e accept x uh, e, no, no, oh, no, e. Okay. E X C E E T. And then let's get the uh, let's get the namespace. So do you see that little bulb? It, mm -hmm. it might actually help you. Click on that little light bulb on the left side. It will help you kind of find uh, missing. You want to add the system basically, right? Shift. I don't know if it's system or system dot link. I think it's system dot link. Yeah, there you go. And then inside that accept function, pass in the fitted items in there. Uh, hold on, did I got this? No, no, you have it. That's it. That's right. Okay. So what is this guy complaining about? What's it saying? Uh, it saying I'm returning a type that is not exactly a list. All I want you to do is just before that uh, semicolon, just type in dot to list. Dot to list. To list. Open close parentheses and then and then uh, semicolon. No, no parentheses, not angle brackets. Yep, yep. And then semicolon. That's it. So what this list is doing, it's basically going and saying all the furniture that I have, except these fitted items. Let's create a new list, and that new list will be the not fitted items. Now all we need to do is to basically iterate on these not fitted items. Mm -hmm. and print them all out. Let's do that. How do I iterate? For each. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, Not four. Yeah. <laughs> for each. OK. Hmm? Um, we want to say, should we keep it bar or? Um... Let, let's go with furniture so we're very clear about the type. Mm -hmm. Of every item in every collection. That's right. Items would be not fitted items. Mm -hmm. Not fitted item because mm -hmm. you're iterating one item at a time, right? And oh. with these variables, try to keep the first letter lowercase. It's just an engineering standard kind of thing. The, so last... the, the first letter. Yeah, we call it camel casing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so item, just the one, because you're iterating one item on a list of items. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's print it out. So for each one of those, let's just write in a <clears throat> let's let's um let's do, do a console. Console. no 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 let's do let's do console right line. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't like console. What did I have? It needs a system. It needs a system uh, uh, direct. There you go. So I did option more for max option return. Uh, we, we could do it this way too. So console that right line. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's add in there not fitted item dot name. Yeah, because we put it in the name. Cool. And then instead of this return statement that you have in line 142, mm -hmm. let's, let, let's erase that statement completely. And let's just go and say, um, put under the else statement after the open, the open scope, after the else statement, Put a mm -hmm. console right line items that did not fit and then colon after the open scope. After this one? No, the open scope. What is open scope? The one in line 135. 135. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. After no 135. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. On top. <laughs> so here. Yep. Take a new line and just type in. Console right line. These items did not fit. 
then put a colon in there. Mm -hmm. This item doesn't fit. Item or item. Let's go with let's go with these because there's many of them. Is, is, is items do not fit. Yeah, let's put a colon in there just to make it pretty. Because we're going to give a list of things. Let's put a colon. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so so this is going to print that. We still need to, to exit this statement somehow. So what we can do um, after the closing scope of for each, we can just say return and then items did not fit. Just a simple string. Mm -hmm. uh, return. Mm -hmm. Then uh, hmm, it's just a just a string. Yeah, items did not fit. Something like that. That uh, do not fit. Or actually, let's change this to say not. Uh, we it couldn't fit all items. Couldn't fit all all items. Great. Now let's try this again, Sally. Let's go and run our program and see what happens this time. Ah, did it error out? Mm, no. Look, nope. look, 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 look what it says. These mm -hmm. items did not fit. The sofa and the kids play could not fit all items. I put a very funny name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what is what is a C <laughs> sofa. Is that? <laughs> yeah, I had something. I don't know what other chair we have. <laughs> So <laughs> whatever <number>. goes. Whatever <laughs> go. <laughs> so so that's it. So this is how we solve this problem. What I really want you to kind of extract out of this is how you visualize solving a problem. Like even the folks out there on the streets, some folks with two men in a truck or whoever is out there, they have to solve these problems. The only difference between a person that's solving a problem that they're dealing with at work and they're doing it, you know, uh, just verbally or communicating it verbally. And a software engineer is that the software engineer is using a programming language to express that problem. So they never, ever have to solve it again. So let me let me take you back to this this little example that we have. I promise you and I've seen this in real life, you know, bunch of dudes just doing work, moving stuff around. Right, they stop there at a second before they start doing any work and they start asking themselves, hey, dude, you know, are we going to be able to fit all of this in? Right, well, here's the list of what you have and here's the list of what you what I have. They keep track, you know, you know, these folks that stand like, let's say, even with the farmers, when they have a, they have a herd of sheep that are going in, they count them in one by one. So they know which one is missing and which one is not. People do it every day. When I tell people programming is something that everyone does every day, people don't believe it, but that's really what it is. We yeah. took a problem like this. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sally. Mm -hmm. no, I just wanted that real problem. So we every day compare the list. Exactly. And some of these problems are more complicated than others. But the one thing I really wanted you to kind of, you know, start taking a look at, and this is really the whole idea of this exercise, is to understand, like you asked me a question, and it's a very good, very, very good question. Last time you said to me, Hassan, why, why aren't we using arrays mm -hmm. instead of lists, right? That's the answer right there, because lists are so powerful. They give you all these nice functionality, like accept, like add, like see, you used a bunch of, bunch of capabilities out of the list type today to be able to kind of communicate, you know, and use these capabilities to kind of visualize a problem in the real world and its solution. Now here is here is a little assignment for you at the end of our session here. Yes. <laughs> How That's do I know? Fun. <laughs> <laughs> right. How do I know the capabilities? Like you might ask me a question. You might say, Hassan, you know, I don't know how to how do you know these things? I hear people ask me this question all the time. Say, how did you know that you could do this and that, you know, with uh, with the with the list mm -hmm. there's if you go and say 
something like C sharp list Microsoft Docs. Can you please zoom it in? Mm -hmm. So if you go to docsmicrosoft.com and then you go into list of type, you will see all kinds of different examples mm -hmm. of what these lists are capable of. All the, the methods that can be applied. Okay, I see. Right. These methods mm -hmm. here, Sally, is your assignment. I want mm -hmm. you to go through these methods and try them out. Learn what they do. There's so much great stuff in here. Like in there, you did, you did accept, mm -hmm. accept functionality. This, this is what you use today, but you also used add functionality, right? Mm -hmm. This add functionality. Mm -hmm. There are ones that are more common than others. They're like pops, pop, uh, pop stars, right? Some of them are more common than others. Some of them engineers use more than others. All I want you to do is mm -hmm. to go through this list. And out of this list, out of this list, okay. I want you to find out whether it's possible for us to take in a list of furniture and return a list of strings, like just the names of this furniture. So we kind of gonna mutate and shape the furniture that we're getting in into just a list of strings. You, you know what I mean? What that basically means is that I want to, <coughs> excuse me, I want to go here and say something to the effect of, let's, let me, let me pull this guy out. What do I want to do? I want to be able to go and say, I don't really care about the sizes anymore. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have a list of furniture like this. And it has new furniture. Right. And you did name, let's say sofa and maybe size. That's like, I don't know, whatever the size is. Right. I'm going in here and adding a list on the fly, which we talked about last time. You can add it in so many different ways. But this time I want to know what kind of power, what kind of more power that I can get here out of a out of a, a list of furniture. And, I, and, and what I want to do here is that this list here, Sally, I want this list to turn into a list that looks like this. Hmm. In no particular order in no particular order. How can I pick a list like this and turn it into this mm -hmm. using the powerful capabilities? Like you can solve this with a for each. That's easy. You can create a for each and create a new list. Mm -hmm. And this new list is, is a list of, our, nope, I don't want you to do that. Okay. I want you to look at the capabilities that mm -hmm. this list has here. Mm -hmm. And it's okay for you to do a little bit of research if you want to. Mm -hmm. and, and go out there and see there's so many capabilities, Sally. There's a lot of capabilities in here that you can leverage. Take a look at all of them and mm -hmm. see what kind of power can the list do for you. There must be something in here in the description that says maybe something to the effect of transform or something. I don't know. So here's the link. And we're going to include the link in the description of this video for people who are following this series. And let's connect next time, tomorrow. And it let's see. Oh, awesome. <laughs> OK, wonderful, wonderful. Now it's your turn to kind of publish the code, that, that nice code that you wrote that works into a gist and just share it with me so I can put it in our sessions and our videos <laughs> mm -hmm. i'll let you i'll let you determine what you want to share and what you don't in terms of commenting and all that kind of stuff okay, yeah friend? <laughs> okay have awesome. a good night i awesome. will send it to you awesome. okay Th night. thank you sally take care bye bye, bye.